Hi, my name is Dave Bodie, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make an ambient pad sound with the Headrush MX-5. Now, what makes this pad sound unique is that it allows you to change chords without the previous chord or note that you were playing running into the new chord or note. I've created pad sounds before using a really long reverb. I mean, it's really not that difficult. You dial in some kind of clean tone in a super long reverb, something with, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, or even a couple of minutes of decay, and you just roll into your volume knob, and boom, you have a pad sound. It's really that easy. The problem is, once you kind of play something, and then it's out there in the reverb, swimming along, when you play your next chord, it's going to mush into that previous chord, and that does not always sound good, especially if you're not playing chords that go together sequentially. All right, I'm gonna walk you through all the effects on here. I'm not gonna explain how all of them work. That would be a video that is several hours long, but let's start off with the basic guitar sound, amplifier and IR or impulse response. I'm using an SL100 on the clean channel, preamps at 33, master volumes at 100. The EQ is pretty much at 50%, except for the treble, which is at 60 something. For an IR, I'm using an IR from a collection called God's Cabs. And uh, I've talked about it before. It's a really nice collection. It's got a bunch of different microphones in a bunch of different positions. And this is the IR that I'm using right there. Now, the one effect that makes this rig do what it does is the dynamic delay. Let's check it out. Essentially, you can think about it like this. With these settings right here, and you can just copy this, you know, pause this, screenshot it, do whatever you need to do. If you have your envelope to feedback set to negative 100, your envelope to mix set to negative 100, the feedback set to 100, the mix set to 50, and then if you jump on the second page, low cut all the way down, high cut all the way up. Essentially what that does is, every time you play a new note or a new chord, it resets the delays. It pulls the mix all the way to dry, so you don't hear any of the previous delay that was going on, and it sets the feedback from 100 down to zero again. And then as your chord or your note kind of rolls off in amplitude, right? So you play and it goes up like this and it comes down, the mix slides back to 50% and the feedback goes back to 100%, which means you get all those lovely delays that happen. That's basically how this pad works. The rest is just kind of filler and making it kind of sound nice. So just with these settings and the clean amplifier, this is what I get. I'm gonna roll into this chord with my volume knob. Now it sounds like just a delay and that's fine, but listen when I play another chord. Okay, I, for <laughs> I forgot to roll into that one, but I think you see, and if you think that both of those chords are happening at the same time, I'll play a, another chord that doesn't go with those chords. The other chord's gone. Now, if you don't roll in with your volume knob or your expression pedal, you do get that kind of ping pongy kind of sound, which is fine and it can work over top of some other patty stuff, but I'm gonna show you how to get really nice swells automatically. And if you're looking at the thing, you can see there's an effect called auto swell on here. And that's really what I think works super well. You can check out the settings here and copy these. I don't need to go into them, but with the auto swell, it's basically going to do the volume swell for me. That's it. You do get some pulsing with the dynamic delay set like this, but I think that's totally fine because with the reverbs and the other effects here, it gives a little bit of motion. So we got the auto swell and the dynamic delay. You can see in front, I have a Dyn 3 comp. This is just a basic compressor and its main function is to compress a little bit, but boost the signal a lot. The dynamic delay works best when you give it a lot of signal. Now, this is going to be especially important if you have a guitar with single coils that don't have a lot of output. You're going to need to adjust the gain on this compressor up more so that when you play a chord, it fully resets the delay. Without this effect engaged, without the compressor engaged, sometimes you'll play a chord and then your next chord that you play is not loud enough to fully get the feedback pushed down to zero in the dynamic delay or the mix. And so then you get a little bit of the previous chord bleeding over. And if you play chords that are like a half step apart, 
um, or like a tritone apart or chords that just don't go together sequentially, it's not going to sound very good. So this just kind of squishes it a little bit and boosts the signal way up. So with that engaged, now I have this. And actually, that just sounded like it was clipping a little bit. But what this compressor does at the very end of the signal chain is it makes sure that you don't clip your output because with some of the other effects engaged and depending on your guitar in the output, you can very easily kind of swamp the output um, with all of these kind of delays building and building and building. Okay, let me turn on the delay again and see if that sounds right. That sounds a little better. That previous chord, totally gone. So these are the basic building blocks. Dynamic delay, auto swell, compressor up front to boost the signal into the auto swell so that when it hits the dynamic delay, that the dynamic delay has enough signal to fully reset every chord. That's basically where we are right now. The compressor on the very end is making sure we don't clip the output, which can happen without it. All right, some of the special sauce in making this really lush is reverb. So basic reverb at the end, I have the air reverb here and I'm using the church algorithm size set to 100, mix 26, color 4805. And you can see most importantly, the time is set to 1.3 seconds. Now, if you use a long reverb decay, that's going to completely negate everything that you've done with the dynamic delay. Because like I said, in the top of this video, you can make a pad sound really easy. Just use a really long reverb. However, if you change chords, it's not going to change with you. That previous chord is going to be out there in the ether and it's not going to sound great. So what I've done is I've mapped the time to the expression pedal. So normally when I play a chord, it's going to give me a little bit of reverb, but if I want a little extra juice, I can kick that up to infinite, and that's really gonna stretch things out. You can hear that it was definitely adding a lot of kind of filler stuff. So I like having a variable time here with the expression pedal, because if it does sound too pulsing for whatever reason, I can just increase this and that will kind of smooth out all of those pulses. Now, another great reverb effect to use with a pad sound is a shimmer. So a shimmer is basically a reverb with some kind of modulation. In this case, it's modulating the sound up one octave. So it's shifting the pitch up and then blending that with the original and adding some reverb to it. Here it is without the dynamic delay. So you can hear it's adding kind of this upper, it almost sounds like a choir, if you will. So with the dynamic delay, here's what we have. You can hear there is some holdover when I kill the dynamic delay, but it's really not too bad. Now, if you think those swells are too fast, and I would argue that they are, uh, you can just increase the attack time to about a second or so. This will decrease your ability to change chords really quickly, but it will make those swells a lot smoother. Check it out. Up next is a chorus effect. So a chorus, I'll jump in here so you can see, Headrush MX-5 has a bunch of different choruses. I just picked one and noodled around with the settings until it sounded nice. But a chorus will add modulation to that sustaining kind of pad that you get with the dynamic delay. And I think it sounds really nice. Also, you'll probably see me do this, but I have this bad habit of arpeggiating the chords kind of slowly like this, and the auto swell does not like that. Uh, one tip is that when you're playing the chords, just hit the chords. 
but you, you may see me do that from time to time. So that's basically it. You can see there are a few more effects and I'm going to talk about those in a second. But if you want to build an ambient guitar pad that responds to your playing, that's how to do it. You need the dynamic delay, auto swell, compressor up front, some kind of clean guitar sound. You don't have to use an IR if you don't want to. A chorus is nice, not required though. Shimmer, I'd say that's, that's kind of needed for this. And a reverb at the end to smooth everything out. And some kind of limiter or compressor at the end of the chain to make sure that the signal doesn't get too loud because it's very easy for the things to kind of build up and get very overwhelming. And you don't want to clip the output of whatever unit you are using. All right, I have two more effects here that I want to talk about. One is a second dynamic delay, which is set up exactly, except for the uh, envelope rate, which is basically just a delay. You can see right down here, it's set to 0.01 seconds. Other than that, it's set exactly the same as the first one. So what the second dynamic delay does is it will bring back a little bit more sustain after you use the first one. If you leave this on, it doesn't really do a whole lot, but if you just play something and then you have the sound dying out a little bit, if you want to bring it back just a little bit, you can kick this on and that will do that. Let me demonstrate. So turn on my other dynamic delay. We'll play a C this time. We're going to let this die down a second. So video edit's going to jump forward 15 seconds right now. Now I'm going to turn on the second dynamic delay. Just like magic, we get some of that sustained back. Now it won't last forever, but it does last for a very long time, like minutes. And I think this is dope. And if you want even more, Oh yeah. So that's really cool if you want the sound to last for a very, very long time. Maybe the end of a the end of a song or something. I mean you could just play another chord, I suppose. But if you want a lot of sustain, that's how to get it. You can also add way more if you put uh, the reverb at infinite as well. It's not going to last forever, but it's a very long time. I think long enough for most applications. If you need more than that, get an Electro Harmonics freeze pedal. And that should do you just fine. So the last effect is another shimmer effect. And if I jump into the settings here, you can see this time I am modulating it down an octave. And this is really nice if you play up the neck and you play kind of higher notes, um, higher little intervals or chords or things like this. Come on, that's pretty cool. I think this is a really, really solid setup. You can get a lot of different sounds from your regular guitar here. So let's say you just have like a basic neck and a bridge pickup like I have. Right now my tone is all the way up. You can get really dark stuff just by rolling down your tone. This actually sounds a lot more similar to kind of your traditional pad sound on a keyboard. Check it out. That is really nice and warm, right? It's And by warm, I mean it just doesn't have a lot of upper harmonics, but that's how somebody might describe it. And I can bring it back with this second dynamic delay. It's like you're fishing, you're reeling it in. But I think this sounds nice. Obviously with the MX-5, I don't have all the buttons that you have with some of the bigger head rush units. I only have three little switches here and I've chosen to put the swell on one, the second dynamic delay on one and the second shimmer on a hardware switch. And I've mapped the expression pedal to reverb time. For me, this works really well because I like kicking in that second dynamic delay to bring the sound back a little bit. I like having the shimmer to add some of that low stuff in there and be able to kick that on and off. And I like disabling the swell from time to time just to give it a little bit more rhythm. 
sometimes what I like to do is play a chord and then kick that off and then just make some weird noises, uh, something like this. You also don't need the swell for this effect to work. If you play a chord and then you just hang on to it for a second, if the signal is loud enough going into the dynamic delay, you won't hear the first repeat. Check it out. <laughs> and I think that's cool because sometimes it's nice to get that nice attack of playing a chord on the guitar. You don't always want to swell it in. And so as long as you hang on the chord for just a second, you won't hear that first repeat. So it allows you to change chords as well. So. Well, that's pretty much it for this super pad sound on the Headrush MX-5. I hope you found that interesting and maybe a little bit fun. So far with these videos that I've done, folks have left comments saying that they've appreciated or they've learned something new about the Headrush MX-5 or guitar stuff in general. And if that is you, go ahead and leave a comment to let me know. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave those as well. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. That would be super awesome. All right, until next time, my name is Dave Bodie, and I'll see you around.